We went to Moldova first because we heard it was at the epicenter of the trafficking crisis. This is a country where 10% of the population has been trafficked. After the fall of communism in 1991, a severe economic collapse led to half of the entire adult working population leaving the country in search of work. We found that as people were abandoning the country, the children were just being left behind. This created a massive social orphan crisis. Many of these desperate children were winding up in orphanages where corruption runs rampant. We talked to investigative journalist Victor Malarek about this. He spent years in Eastern Europe documenting this crisis. The serious problem here is that so many directors of orphanages and assistant directors of orphanages know that these girls are gonna age out and they tell traffickers who are waiting at the gates. But no one cares about the orphan, because no one knows. We actually had a chance to meet up with a girl named Anka from a safe house for victims of human trafficking. And she explained what was happening from the inside. The sad reality, particularly for young women or these young girls in orphanages, is they have no one. They existed in the institution, but once they leave the institution, they go into some kind of vortex and no one knows what happens to them. She's gone, she's disappeared, and you never see them again. What we saw was that traffickers were setting up employment agencies to target these girls with false promises of legitimate work. They tell them that they have modeling jobs for them, they have dancing jobs for them, or they have uh, jobs for them in, in hotels and, and restaurants as waitresses or, or maids. And these women want to believe this. They need to believe this because they're desperate. Probably so comportava foarte frumos. Pe urmă el odată ne-a întrebat pe noi dacă nu vrem să plecăm în Moscova. Și noi l-am întrebat și să lucrăm acolo. El a zis că el lucrează păzăște un magazin, dar noi să lucrăm, îi trebuie să niște fete să lucrăm noi în magazin acolo. Da, ca vânzătoare și-o. Dar nu-i întrebă eu bani, atunci pe mine nu avea nici și nu mă ajuta și-o întrebă eu la examen. Și m-am gândit, poate și, bine, dacă eu nu-i prindea să mă încredere în răză. Dar eu tot timpul, eu îl întrebasem chiar pe dânsul, eu zic, vai, tu n-ai de gând acolo să mă duci și să mă avinzi de el și cu tine, cum, adică fetele astea lucrează acolo și nu avea să-ți spui că ceva se întâmplă sau... Să ia să-ți placă acolo să vieți. Adică din vorbe lui. Și eu... Everybody wants a better life for themselves, so they sell you a better life. Oftentimes they come pouring in, unaware of the hell that they're going to be entering. Other times they'll just look at a young woman and say, we want her, we know she's not going to come, you know, of her own free will, so they'll abduct her. А я сначала согласилась, потом передумала. Не знала о том, что если я туда пойду, могу обратно не вернуться. Когда я им сказала, что я передумала, они сказали, что все хорошо, чтобы я не переживала. После того, как они сказали, эти слова меня закрыли в квартиру в течение трех дней, пока не был день. Да, 
там в, в еду, в питье, там мы ставили таблетки, э, как бы не то что таблетки, а лекарства, чтобы я спала и чтобы не шумела. Я в один день пришла в себя и я хотела убежать. Э, они меня как бы ударили. И сказали, если я еще раз буду пытаться как бы этого сделать, то они знают, что со мной делать. If a girl would try to, to, to scream and shout or something like that, I know that I would do my utmost to shut her up. You just think of how much money this girl can make me. And you don't care what she needs to go through in order to get it. Organized crime is, is just uh, anarchy. They don't recognize any uh, authority whatsoever, any enforcement authority. They're, they're a law unto themselves. Since it's mafia, they know before you walk into that room and start seeing with your eyes how is it operated. They know where you live. They know where your parents work. They know if you have children, they know about your sisters, your brothers, they know everything about you. They don't leave nothing to chance. They're stone cold people, no emotions. You have to be like that if you want to do something in this world. If they don't like you, they don't just kill you. They'll kill your wife children, your brothers, your sisters. Sometimes they'll let you live. And that's the way they work around the world. It's, it's all an issue of uh, fear and intimidation. I was in the train, and I took the documents and took the train. Шлюда не спуски, он нам просто до сайши девасик, слукрез в магазин, да слукрез к фетель на трас. Как простот. Шлю на вем котру. These young women were abducted or tricked and brought to what they call breaking ground houses. What are the breaking grounds? Could you describe that? What does that mean? The breaking grounds are apartments and, and houses out of sight where the women and girls are brought to be what they call seasoned for the profession of prostitution. They are brought into these rooms and they are broken. Their bodies are broken, their spirits are broken, their souls are broken. <laughs> Ну я пытался не бат для них, и для них, как и сенсте уж на камеру ж не батем. Интернет, ну это тем, что тем куфрик, ну манка, мы штем кляре, может тресом дождь, мы арсбатыш не обожаю к мини. Скеп, я канал вот за смотрел Вася, кто где грабну маду где колю, я кардем к. Sometimes at three o'clock at night you get a phone call. There will be a car waiting for you in 10 minutes. You never know the location where they keep them. You walk into a room that is set up just like a fashion show, with a stage. You sit, you take your seat, lights go off, lights on the stage turn on. The girls walk on the stage, take their clothes off and start moving around, just like a fashion show. And knowing that when this girl is on stage, that guy already has the next two years of her life planned. Sometimes the guy that buys them demands to test the merchandise. Nobody cares about these girls. They, they turned into an object. Just like you go into the market and you buy yourself a 
pair of underwear, you go into a different kind of market and you buy yourself a woman. It's hard for the first time or the second time, but you just get to a point where you just say, it's good money. The girls explained to us how they were transported through these highly sophisticated networks that involved document forgers, smugglers, border officials, taxi cab drivers, all the way down to new owners awaiting them at their destination. These guys, they take your passport. And these guys, they lock them in a room where they eat, sleep, have sex, everything in the same room. They get treated like dogs, worse than dogs, because they take their dogs out three times a day. What happens if one of these girls wants to escape? If she gets caught by the pimp, most probably she'll get a good beat up. Stay in bed for about a week and continue to work prostitution. How do you run away? How does a woman who is from a, a, a small little farming village in Moldova finally finds herself in Berlin, doesn't speak German, but has known that in the entire time that she has been trafficked, there were immigration officials, there were border guards, there were customs officials and police officers all getting their hands greased with, with payoffs. Fata, după câte am auzit de acolo, e o fost legată, odată încercat să fug și a fost dus în pădure din niște băieți și o legată de copac cu chelea goală. Și o legată de copac și o băteu, se băteu joc de dânsa de acolo. Și întâmplător s-a dat drum, a fugit de acolo la dâns și a început la să alergi pe tras și era cu chelea așa. Și mașina s-a oprit și a luat și a dus-o înapoi la suniori acolo. Patru în ochi. Și tot loc mă uit sau mă stăr mai mult între lume să mă țin, tot timp eu am impresia că mă urmărești. Eu chiar, chiar că stau aici, eu tot timp stau cu frică că ei să nu găsească și să nu aflu nimeni. Da, eu tare mult mă timp de asta. We couldn't fathom what a girl must go through that endures being trafficked, but we met up with a psychologist and longtime anti-trafficking advocate, Dan Allender, to get insight. You must understand that exploited women are part of systems, mafias, pimps, control, again, manipulation. And the core of that is to break down further any sense of human dignity. It is a form not only of dehumanization, but it literally is bestial and making a woman into an animal. So when you see these young women on the side streets of, of big capital cities like Paris and Milan and London and New York, what you see is a woman in total, total submission. She's going to listen to her master. She will never cross him. And what we see when we look at these women is the gaudy clothes, the cheap makeup, the stiletto heels, the come hither smiles, and we just write them off as whores, prostitutes that are not worth a moment of our pity or a moment of any thought. One of the things that really amazed us over the course of our travels is that we saw Eastern European girls everywhere we went, uh, from Israel to Turkey, uh, Dubai, Southeast Asia, uh, back in the US. Uh, we saw that they were being exported all over the planet to be used in prostitution. 